you know the Avengers? I don't mean Marvel's Avengers. I mean the adventures of super spy John Steed on British television in the 1960s. So stylish and witty and so successful, in fact, that it was shown on American network TV. Well, there's an American spin-off. Did you know that? I didn't know that till recently. And uh, it's not very good. In the mid-70s, after the original show had been cancelled for several years, a new series appeared called The New Avengers. I was looking through a newspaper archive and I found this story that was hyping up a new American version. Beautiful but deadly. Since the Avengers first exploded onto your screens 18 years ago, it has produced more sex symbols than any other television series. It has meant stardom for luscious lovelies like Honor Blackman, Dinah Rigg, Linda Thorson and Joanna Lumley. Now America has discovered an actress who could become the sexiest Avengers girl of them all. She is Morgan Fairchild, a leggy blonde from Texas, who stars in a new American TV film, Avengers USA, which is modelled on the popular thriller series. The American version has been written by Brian Clemens, who was also responsible for the original British series. And yesterday from Hollywood, the 28-year-old beauty talked about the role which could become her launching pad to international success. I've seen episodes of The Avengers which featured Dinah Rigg and Linda Thorson, and I thought that they were both very good. But the character I play is a bit different from those Avengers girls. She's much more like an all-American girl, very forthright and self-sufficient, not at all as laid back as the character Diana Rigg played, Morgan told me. It really made this show sound like it was a going concern. But I'd never heard of it, so I did a bit of searching on the internet, and it turns out that it's on YouTube, and it, it was a pilot that got nowhere. It was a complete flop. It's a Quinn Martin production, which, if you're my age, signals that you're watching either The Invaders... A Quinn Martin production. ...or The Streets of San Francisco. Clemens is the writer and producer, and starring alongside Fairchild, is a gentleman called Granville Van Dusen, who looks like a conventionally handsome Tom Baker. Susie, I love my mother, deep sea fishing, and I love the Portland Trailblazers, but I don't love you. I bet you do. $10,000? Not even a little bit? As Joshua Rand and Susie, Van Dusen and Fairchild have absolutely no chemistry whatsoever. No spark. They are flat as a pancake. And to make things worse, Fairchild keeps uh, flirting with this guy. And because he's strictly professional, he doesn't respond to her. I think this is meant to be, uh, in some ways, charmingly British or quasi-British. Uh, but it just comes across as him being either asexual, gay, or just not into her in the slightest. I'd like to share, too. Susie. Mm. You're very beautiful and desirable. But. But. We work together. Now, in the later series of The Avengers, Steed and his sidekick, Tara King, used to report to Mother, who was essentially the boss of the Secret Service. Joe, sit yourself down. In Escapade, Joshua and Susie talk to a computer with a posh English accent. It's known as Oz, because it's a bit like behind the curtain in The Wizard of Oz, and it emerges from a wall, a bit like Mr. Smith in the Doctor Who spin-off, The Sarah Jane Adventures. Ah, oh, Joshua Rand, Susie. Now, which of you is which? I've had a little trouble with my sex delineation circuit. Now I can't tell which of you is the man and which is the girl. Well, we can tell the difference, and that's all that really matters. 
It's set in San Francisco, so there's lots of scenic shots of the Golden Gate Bridge. And the story is really, really nothing to write home about. Susie and her fellow agent, Paula, do a training exercise with a helicopter that lifts them up into the sky after they've done what they've got to do. And uh, then they discuss it all in a locker room while sort of semi-naked. It's about as risque as 70s American television ever got, which isn't much at all. Susie meets up with Joshua by pretending to faint in front of his car. And after some tepid badinage, we then cut to Paul's apartment, where, yes, she's about to take a shower. Now, the villain, who is completely colourless and forgettable in a way that would never be allowed in the Avengers, kidnaps Paula. And the rest of the episode is a rather boring search for her involving teddy bears and an obelisk. I'd like to describe the episode in more detail, if only to get more watch time on my YouTube channel, but I worry that I'd fall into a coma if I tried. Oh, you make me feel tired. And you make me feel inadequate. You know, I've had him down these streets every morning, just barely staying ahead of my waistline, or you. <sighs> Joshua Wren, you look terrific. I never saw you do an ounce of exercise. Oh, but I do. Every evening, I stir my own martini. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what went wrong for Brian Clemens here. If I'd been responsible for one of the most durable and successful TV franchises of all time, I don't think I'd go over to California and make a pale imitation of it, completely devoid of anything that made it charming in the first place. Just a minute ago, you were so sure. I changed my mind. It's a woman's privilege. I know. And I am a woman. I know that too. But it's on YouTube. I'll leave a link in the description. Watch it if you feel like it, if you're a completist. And uh, let me know what you think. And if you've enjoyed this video, it would be splendid if you liked it. And I'd be honoured if you subscribed to my channel. See how I'm trying to be an English gentleman here?